In today's video, I'm going to be comparing Evernote with Obsidian Canvas. I'm going to be talking through which is the best app for putting down notes and for general day-to-day -day use. I'm going to go through all the different things, the benefits of each, the cons of each, the pricing, everything you need to know to make a great decision on which to use. So watch the whole video so you can get a great understanding of what is best for your needs. Let's get right into it. So first things first, we need to quickly talk about pricing because this is potentially something you might look at. So the pricing for Obsidian is actually free for personal use. Now, if you want it for commercial use, it's $50 per user per year, which works out roughly to about four to five dollars per month. Now, if you go over here and you want to get some add ons like some storage or you want to sync some notes across devices, that kind of stuff, then you can pay an additional eight dollars per month per user and that's billed annually. You can also have the publishing option which allows you to publish notes to the web which you can get for an additional $8. And finally have, they have the early access section here which is for a one-time $25 payment which basically gives you access to all their beta stuff, early access, all that kind of stuff. But for the base space use you're just going to need the free plan. I use the free plan um, and I've never needed to buy anything extra. Now, if we go over here onto the Evernote page, I'll show you the pricing. So just like Obsidian, they have a free plan and this basically allows you to capture ideas. It's great for taking notes. It says you have 25 megabytes maximum note size, 60 megabytes of monthly uploads, which is not a lot. And you get to attach things like PDFs, etc. Now for 667 a month, you get a lot more um, uploads, you get 10 gigabytes, you get 200 megabyte max. So you're probably going to need this if you're going to be uploading files and such. And then you can go to the professional plan if you need to. They also have the Teams plan, but if you want to look more in depth, you can go here. So they both have a free plan, but I would say the Obsidian free plan is a lot more, um, you know, has a lot more features involved with it. So let's get into the features of each of the different softwares. So I'm going to start off with Obsidian. So I've actually made a few videos on Obsidian and here is from one of the videos I made. To start off with Obsidian, we can go up to the top and we can create a new canvas. So a canvas is basically like this workspace here and you're able to drag in these little blocks here. And inside these blocks, you can type into it. So I could put block one info X, Y, Z. You know, I can type whatever I want into it. I can change the color of the box, you know, I can change it over here if I want to. I can create a another box over here. We can say block two idea. What we can do here is we can double tap that, if you see, and that will make the box go to the size of the text. We can actually also quick click this button here and it's going to create an arrow, which we can then change the color of. We can pick here, change the color. We can also double click it and we can put some text to go into this box here. So this is basically the, um, I think it's called canvas feature. Yes, this is the canvas feature. You can also implement notes. So basically a note is basically one of the um, other notes that you've got. So I can implement this. So if I look at this one here, I can add this into here and it's going to allow, it's going to show exactly what's happening on there. So when I change it, it's going to go live into here, which is quite cool for connecting up things. You know, if you've got different pages for different topics that you're studying and you want to compile it all in one place and want to be able to go into the individual page, you see that I could just double click on it. It was simple as that. So that is basically the start feature of how this works. The next thing you can do is you can actually create a note and a note is just simple. It's just like a text document. So I can type into it. I can put bullet points um, like this, but this is pretty simple. And you know, most apps do this. The real way that Obsidian is different from the other apps is the implementation of plugins. So if I go down to the bottom left hand side and go to this settings cog here, they have this thing called community plugins. Now they have core plugins, they're not as interesting. But if I go to community plugins here, I can go to browse and there are hundreds. In fact, there are thousands of plugins that you can choose from that will help you to optimize your Obsidian for your needs. So there's checklists, there's periodic notes. Maybe you have classes, you know, and you need to organize them by date. They have word counters, emoji toolbar. 
They have everything you could ever need in here, even text generator, which connects to ChatGPT. You can use all of these different tools, um, and that is one of the good features of Obsidian is the the customization of this. If I close this now, I've already got a few of them installed. So I've got this one called Excala Draw, and I'll show you how it works. If I go into it here by clicking on New Drawing, it's like a souped up paint, I guess you could call it. It gives you some really cool features, so I can add a box here, and it has some really nice it has a really nice look to it. So I can put facts about X topic. And you can see here, it's it's really nice. It looks great. It's, it's, it's good on the eyes. You know, it makes things look interesting. I can change my box size here. I can even use this pen tool here and I can write. I can use the arrow tool here so I can click here. I can then put a pivot point here and click it into there like this. I'll double click it here to finalize it. Oops. I can double click here to type some text. Hello. You can see this is just one of the many plugins that are available from Obsidian. So this is one of the huge benefits of Obsidian that it has a customer. It's hugely customizable to your needs and you can then implement this document here into your wider document. So now that we've gone over Obsidian and the benefits of Obsidian, I'm going to show you some of Evernote's stuff. So Evernote, you can already see that the UI is just not as nice. It really is not that interesting in comparison. On the left here, we have the new section, so I can create a new note or new task. I'm just going to create a new note here. And let's say it's topic one, research. So you can already see this is a lot more professional in a way. It's a lot more formal. It's not as fun. It makes it a lot, you know, I know the UI is not as cool in my opinion. So in here I can start writing stuff. Hello, welcome to my topic. See, in things like Notion you can do slash and slash will allow you to add different sort of commands, I guess you could call it. In here you can't have that. So if I delete this here, it gives me some... Um, template suggestions so if i want a to-do list i can add that if i want a reading list daily reflection if i click add more there's a ton of different ones i can add here i can also open the gallery and the gallery basically is just a list of different templates you can use so it has things like calendars agendas it's pretty good for you know there's a lot of pre-organized things here so if you have some kind of business then this could be good for it if you have a you know, um, a sales pipeline, for example, we could put that in here and then we can fill in all this data. So there is that where it comes with these pre-made templates. So this is definitely one benefit of it is it's slightly more professional in a way. So if you're, you know, like a team or you run a team, this might be a better option. What I can do here is I can show you the insert section. So I can insert calendar links, links, note link, Dividers, attachment, images, checkboxes, audio recording, code block, sketch. So sketch is very similar to what we just looked at. You can see here, um, I can sketch on it. What you will notice is that the sketching on here is way less nice, in my opinion, than the one on Obsidian. I've got this laser tool here, I think it's called, where it can highlight what's going on. But overall, to me, the this this kind of text is just not as nice overall so that is basically the differences between evernote and obsidian if you want something that's a bit more professional something that's a bit more for a team potentially then i would go with this but if you want something that's a bit more fun maybe you need it for research you need it for studying or you need it for personal needs i would go with obsidian just because of the customization and the you know, more unique feel of it. It makes things a bit more fun, a bit more bouncy, that kind of stuff. So that's basically everything you need to know about them. Let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video and anything else that you would like to add. If you think that I missed something out by one of them, then let me know down below and correct me. That would be great. But that's my honest comparison. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.